you've been trying to figure out how to manage the fire on your char grill or acorn, this is the video for you. Hey guys, this is Steve over at Cookout Coach, where we're all about trying to help you level up your backyard barbecue game. Now if that sounds like something you might need, then think about subscribing. But today, what we're going to be talking about is fire management and the char griller acorn. So recently I've been getting a lot of questions about how do I keep the fire in my char griller acorn down in that 250 to 275 range. It's a good question because this can be a finicky grill to use, but once you figure it out, it's fantastic. You can trust it in those overnights and those long, low and slows. So today, we're going to go ahead and make that video and show you exactly how I do it. The first step is we're going to get about 12 to 14 coals in our charcoal chimney, and I like to light them off separately using a fire starter. Um, a lot of Kamados and Acorns literature included, I believe, uh, recommend you just do the, the whole pyramid method where you sort of build a tower with the coals, put a fire starter in there and light that, and wait till that lights and then spread it out. I've tried that, it's not as consistent for me as this method, so I go ahead and I light off my chimney. Now once those coals in that chimney are pretty good and hot, I'm going to go ahead get my charcoal in my acorn. Um, I'm not filling this up a whole lot today, this is for demonstration purpose, but load up however much you're going to need for your cook. And I like to put my charcoals right in the front, right in front of where that vent's going to be. Right after I put those charcoals down, I go ahead and toss whatever smoking wood I'm using in. Today it's a little bit of apple. And then finally I get my smoking stone on top of that. Now there's an optional step here, if you want to, if you like cooking like this, you can go ahead and add a um, like a half size pan filled with water if you want to have some water in there. That'll help you hold that temperature if you're having troubles. Um, but if you don't want to, I find that I don't have to have it to hold these temps. Now next what we're going to do is a little bit risky, so you got to stay on top of it. We're going to open the bottom damper all the way, and we're going to open the top damper to, I don't know, call it a quarter, eighth, somewhere in there, about this much. Now at this point, we're going to immediately get our thermometer on. We're going to keep an eye on it because as soon as this temp of this pit breaks 200, I'm going to cut it back. And it's going to happen quicker than you think. And once it breaks 200, if you don't stop it, it's going to keep going and going fast. So now that we've broken over 200, I'm going to go up to my top vent and I'm going to cut it way back. Um, I'm terrible at guessing how much, so about this much. Now on the bottom, if I want to hold 250, you'll see there's a little screw right here. I like to go just to the back side of the screw. Now. If you want to go 275, um, I start by adjusting that bottom damper to the front of that screw. Now's the part of barbecue that we're all used to, and that is have some patience. When I'm lighting off the acorn, I like to give myself an hour before I'm planning to put the meat on to let this thing get up to temp and settle in. Getting up to temp's the easy part, settling in so I know it's going to stay there, that's the part I want to make sure I got down. There you go. For me, like I said, that's 250. If I want 275, I'll move to the front of the screw and I'll adjust my top damper as needed. I find that the top damper is way more responsive than the bottom damper for those um, more minute adjustments. So if I want to go from 275 to 250, or if I crank up to 280 and I need to come back down to 275, I like to do it at the top vent. So a few final things to note before we close out this short video. As you saw today, I was using briquettes. You can do this with lump charcoal, but what I find is when the fire jumps from one piece of coal to another one, with lump because you've got such varying sizes you might see um, some more dramatic spikes in your temperature it's not a huge deal and it'll come back down because there's only so much oxygen that can get in your pit but for the most consistent burns I use briquettes um, just so you know the, the literature for this grill says to use lump I use briquettes it doesn't cause a problem um, my ash pan doesn't really fill up I clean it out after every cook and I have no problems the final thing even though this thing is Kamado, and it is amazing at holding temps, and it's amazing at, at getting temp, it's not quite set it and forget it. If you want set it and forget it, you're going to need to install some sort of pit control device. You're going to need to keep an eye on this. It doesn't have to be a constant thing, but keep an eye on it at least every hour. Make sure it doesn't run away from you, because as soon as it gets away from you, it'll get away fast. If you can catch it in that 10 to 15 to 25 degree range, you can bring it back down during your cook. I've seen it jump away from me 100 degrees before, not during a cook, but while I was getting things ready. And uh, it'll be a while for you to come back from that. So that's it, guys. Uh, this pit can be challenging, but it's also very rewarding once you master it. So if you're thinking about getting the char grill egg corn, but you've read the reviews that say it's really hard to hold that temp, you know, it is. But it's, it's masterable. You can figure it out. If you have any questions, 
uh, hit me up in the comments down below. Hit me up um, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I'm on Twitter. I don't really tweet a whole lot, but I'm there. Uh, all the ways to contact me are down in the description link below. Yeah, I hope you all have a good time with it. Until next time, y'all take it easy.